everyone's most anticipated Switch game is finally here, Disney Simsum Festival. I've been collecting Simsum for a couple of years and I have well over 200 of the little cuties, but I was curious just how they planned on expanding the Simsum game to Nintendo Switch. After all, the original mobile game is completely free to play, even if it limits exactly how often you can play with timed lives and microtransactions. So what have they done to justify the full price tag on Switch? Well, on top of a completely transaction-free core puzzle mode, Simpson Festival has 10 mini-games and focuses a lot more on multiplayer. Everything can be played both locally and online, including for the first time the main Simpson puzzle mode. There's quite a lot here, and if you're a Disney fan looking for a cute little party game, then this absolutely delivers that. And the upbeat soundtrack and colourful visuals give the game a really good vibe. But you do have to be careful. Much like Super Mario Party, a Joy-Con is mandatory to play mini-games in Simpson Festival. And without the day one patch, you can't even get past the main menu without one. Thankfully, the patch does make things a little more seamless, and you can access the Simpson puzzle game just fine without ever pairing a Joy-Con, which still makes it fit really well to those playing in handheld mode. You'll start off with only a small amount of playable Simpsons, with tons to unlock over the course of the game, but it's a little bit of a letdown to only see Disney and Pixar characters represented here. I guess Thanos snapped the Star Wars and Marvel characters out of existence, including himself. Still, there's a huge cast of characters and it's adorable to see the designs come to life in a far more elaborate way than the mobile game. It doesn't really matter who you play as in the minigames, but in the puzzle mode each character has a unique special ability, such as Mickey clearing all Sumsums in the centre of the screen. However, it seems some Sumsums have completely different abilities to the mobile version. For instance, on mobile Piglet's ability adds more time onto the clock, but on Switch other characters from his series will appear so you can pop the surrounding Sumsums. It definitely adds an incentive to collect as many characters as you can to see how helpful they are in puzzle mode. Some Frozen 2 DLC has already been announced with Anna and Elsa, so we'll have to see if they can keep the support as strong as the mobile game in the future. Each minigame has both a cooperative and a competitive variant, which can really shake things up. For instance, the air hockey game has a standard game of air hockey, and the co-op version has you working together to pop bubbles. Some minigames are definitely going to remind you of other games, like Sim Chase is flat out Pac-Man, and it's not even subtle. Whereas Egg Pack Coaster is like a less terrifying Thumper, which is fitting, as you can play as Thumper. Not in a bad way though, the multiplayer take on Pac-Man is a lot more accessible than something like Pac-Man Versus. Pretty good mix all around, and I can see myself continuously coming back to games like Simsum Curling and Spinner Battle, especially as almost every single game also has an online mode. There's a ton of variety like Ice Cream Stacker that has you tilting the Joy-Con as you catch falling scoops of Simsum ice cream. Round and Round Run is basically a platforming obstacle course, and Simsum Mania is almost like a light gun shooter. It's like taking a trip to a Disney themed arcade. These minigames feel way more replayable than the online selection from Super Mario Party, which was already pretty limited, however whether the game's community will stick around for all of these modes is yet to be seen. They're not all winners, the rhythm game just unfortunately doesn't seem to work properly. You're meant to shake to hit notes, but it only seems to register gestures when it wants to. You can thankfully ignore the mode for the most part, but if you're playing Sumsum Sum Tour, which takes you through a bunch of random minigames, then there's no way to skip over it. But these are mostly all really fun and accessible minigames. I would have preferred a larger overall selection, but very few of them feel like one and done experiences. And I'm a sucker for coin pushers. This might actually be the best game, especially with all the Simpsons cheering on your gambling habits from the background. Look at them go! <laughs> However, the main attraction is the Simpson puzzle game. And just like the mobile version, it's really simple. All you have to do is match as many of the same Simpson as you can in a single string. So you need to plan ahead to manipulate the board in a way that will get you the best combos. It looks nearly identical to the mobile game, and that's because it mostly is. However, without the intrusion of lives, you can play for way longer on the Switch. And the multiplayer modes add another layer of addiction to what's already a very addictive game. Not only is the Switch screen larger than most phones, but the playing field itself has seen a pretty drastic increase, so with more Simpsons on screen at a time, you should be able to pull off even the most impressive combos. You can play on your own, with two switches locally, or take the action online, though unfortunately it only matches you up with strangers with no options for friends, just like all the other mini games. While I found the online mode to be the most meaningful, it's still a little artificial. Your actions don't actually impact your competitor, and you can't even see what they're doing, so you're just competing to see who can get the highest score in a single round. I was hoping for something a little deeper like Poyo Poyo, but it's still enough of a draw to keep me coming back. 
Simpson Festival does a pretty good job tying all its modes together. There are daily challenges encouraging you to continuously dip in and out of different minigames, and the coins you earn can be used to purchase more playable Simpson. I just wish the transition between games was a bit more seamless. Not only does it have to load a minigame, but it also has to load the arcade menu every time you exit one. The load times aren't bad enough to ruin anything, but they are definitely long enough to interrupt the flow. I liked Disney Simpson Festival. It's easily one of the cutest games I've played in a long time, but whether it's an entirely justified package is going to come down to how much of a Disney Simpson fan you are. For me, it builds upon the foundation set by the mobile game, and the brand new mini games are packed with personality and charm. Even if they aren't the most original ideas, they're still a ton of fun and should be easily accessible for people of all ages. Thanks for watching, and for more on Disney Simpson, be sure to subscribe to Game Explain. Oh, yeah.